In this video, I'm going to take a hopeless looking piece of mesquite that came from my auntie's wood pile and I'm going to turn this lidded box which has inserts from paint chips from the Cadillac Ranch in Amarillo. Hello everybody and welcome back to Stewart Arts. I was out in Tucson uh, here recently visiting my auntie and uh, I spied a wood pile in her backyard and I believe that this wood is mesquite. And I asked her if I could have a couple of pieces of it to see what I could do with it on the wood lathe. And she said, that's fine, but I expect you to make me something and send it to me. So I'm going to do that. Uh, but I, first I thought I would uh, share with you the challenge that I have with this wood and a couple of the pieces that I've tried to turn so far. See, it's incredibly wormy. Uh, it's, it's very solid, uh, and in fact, it, it's very hard uh, underneath once you get past some of this stuff here. Lots of big wormholes and so forth. And I've turned a couple small pieces out of it already. So uh, here's one small piece that I did, and uh, I really like it, but you know, there's some pretty big cracks that have to be stabilized. Here, there's another one. Now, this one I inset some paint chips from the Cadillac Ranch, and I've got another video on how I do that. Uh, and then I did a, uh, I was gonna do a matched grain box. Here, this is the piece that I did, and this was gonna be the top for it. And so there's the pith, and I don't know if you can see the cracks running through this thing, but uh, it's got these cracks, and they're all CA stabilized. But when I turned the lid, I opened up some really big wormholes, so I kind of decided to abandon this lid here. And so I'd like to try to turn another one, and I'll probably do that at some point. So for today, what I've got is uh, I've got these two blanks that I turned out of the other log uh, that Auntie gave me. And so I turned this down, I thought I would make a lidded box out of it. But when I got it off the lathe and, and looked at it, both of these blanks, which came out of the same log, they have wormholes <laughs> in them that go all the way down the length of the wood. So I'm not sure if I'm going to fill that and try to you know, hold on to it and, and use this piece or whether uh, I'm going to just turn it down until the, the wormholes are clear. If I did that, this piece would only be a couple inches in diameter. So I'm going to turn it down and just kind of see what it, the wood tells me it wants. Now this larger one here also has some wormholes, but I don't know if they go all the way down the length of this. So I'm going to try to turn uh, a pretty good sized lidded box out of this one. So that'll be... So we're chucked up here and you can see I've already got a parting line on this. And I think here's what I'm going to try to go for. It's going to be kind of a rounded uh, lidded box. I'm going to try to make a top that's uh, just a little smaller, but you know, tries to sort of follow the form of the bottom here. And uh, if we do a really good job, maybe I can inset a piece of my uh, Cadillac Ranch uh, paint here. So here we go. Just a stop here to examine the work, and uh, this is the kind of stuff that I've been running into here. Uh, some nice little features. Now this I don't mind here. There's a piece, uh, a wormhole that goes through, there's some cracks. I think those are actually going to be okay, but I will have to stabilize those. Uh, there's a little branch coming off. But the lid part here, I've got a couple of pretty good wormholes uh, that I did not see in the blank. So I'm gonna have to address those. There's, there's one at the top and it kind of runs through. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and flood this uh, with some CA and see if I can get it to stabilize. And then, you know, when I get this piece done here, I'll just sand that out and it should, you know, still look like it matches the piece here. I'm also gonna stop and I'm gonna do my inserts for the Cadillac Ranch paint chips. Got some little paint chips fresh from Cadillac Ranch, and I've got other videos about that. Uh, I'll put the links in after this, but I'm going to uh, do a little bit of a, a inset on this blank here on the bottom, and I'm going to use a Forstner bit 
to make recesses for these. This is a 5 8 inch Forstner I'm using here. And I'm just taking it nice and slow. And I will uh, do, put about a 3 16 recess into the wood here. That's about an eighth, just a little more on that. And that should be good. Okay, I got a good fit with these little chips here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, Loctite CA. And this is a medium gel here. And I do this because I'm going to fill up the cavity pretty good. And I want it to flow up around these little insets here so that, you know, they're they're nice and stable in there. So just pop them in and then just kind of use a little bit of a helper here to get them to go flush down inside the hole there. Okay, and I'll do all four of those. So I got them all set in here with the medium gel and I'm going to let that sit for a good while and then I'll take it over to the sander and uh, take these down as close as I can. That way I don't chip them out of there with the tool when I try to I took to this turn. over to the belt sander and I knocked the uh, tops of these down. You can already see the colors popping out on these. <laughs> They're so pretty. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little bit of CA over the top of these uh, just to let it absorb into those layers of paint. This is hundreds of layers of spray paint is, is what it is from uh, different uh, all different kinds of paint so they're not necessarily bonded together layer to layer but uh, I'll, I'll put the CA on it and that should fuse everything together I've had good luck with that in the past so there's number four look at that isn't that pretty looks like the surface of another planet or something so I think we really got something going here with this so I'll let that dry and then we'll do some more rough shaping uh, before we get to hollowing So the base is looking pretty good here. Uh, the inlays look like they're real tight and nice. And I've got some features here that I need to clean up a little bit. They still have a little bit of bug dust in them. So I'm gonna use the Dremel here and just clean those out a little bit. And just put a little bit of CA in there. Just to seal them up. And I think they'll look real nice. I'd already put some CA in this one here. And that's really about all it needs. I, I do have a couple things on the bottom I'm going to have to address here. But, uh... I'm starting the coring with a one inch Forstner to get it going and then I switch over to a round nose scraper and that turned out to be a really good tool for this really dry mesquite. Uh, the insides came out pretty easily and I had to stop pretty regularly to check on the cracking and wormholes and things and I did have to do a little bit of stabilization along the way. But uh, it probably took me less than 10 minutes to get this thing cored out. It was one of the easier core jobs that I've done. So let's have a look at this thing. Um, I could tell it was getting a little catchy on the inside and I knew I was opening up some wormholes and uh, indeed I did. You can kind of see them here. Let's see if I can get the light on that good. There we go. Whoops. If I can get the light on. Yeah, so there's a little better view. You can see there's one there and it goes through about half the thickness of the vessel. There's a couple more. Uh, there's the inside of one there. So I just pack a little bit of sawdust down in the cavities and smush them around there until they're sort of packed in. And then I'm feeding thin cyanoacrylate CA glue in here. And I'll do this a couple of times. I'll put it in there and it'll kind of shrink and dry and I'll repeat the process until, you know, it's proud on the inside. And then when you're done, uh, you got to go back in and kind of clean up the inside and sand it out and make it as nice as you can. So it's not perfect, but um, it's much, much better than just having those big wormholes. So 
So the bottom is really in pretty good shape here. I'm pretty happy with uh, how the interior came out. Uh, the CA glue uh, fix really took care of those big caverns in there. It's got a little bit of roughness, but that's okay. I think that'll just add to the piece. Now I'm gonna leave the tenon on this for now and set it to the side. I've got the lid of this and I'm gonna try to size the closure joint to fit the tenon that I have on the bottom. So uh, we'll go ahead and chuck this baby up. So I omitted the part where I cut the lid and it's because I ended up not using the lid along the lines that I describe here in just a sec. Well, heck, I had hoped to make this a match grain uh, box here, but I had so many problems with the lid here, cracks and so forth. I just decided to abandon it. It's just, it's just the, too rough and I just don't think I can really salvage it to be pretty. So instead what I've decided to do is I'm going to turn a mahogany lid and I'm going to stain it nice and dark. Now I've got this uh, piece of mahogany on a glue block here and I will be uh, turning that to round and getting it shaped. So I'll do that off camera and we'll see camera. So I ended up cutting the top out of mahogany and I applied some Jacobian stain here and so the light part in the middle just doesn't have the stain applied and of course I've got my my brand on here so I think this will be a good lid for this piece it's a, it's a decent fit and I think I like the shape of it so I'm gonna just put some paste wax on here and flip it and work the top if you watch many of my videos you know I'm a fan of uh, the men wax paste uh, good stuff uh, I've used this on many many pieces here and uh, it just goes on nice and easy. And it's not an overly finished look, uh, but I think it's really appropriate to keep that sort of natural look uh, for a lot of the, the wood that I, I turn. I don't like it to be overly finished. So apply it, a little polish here. So just an explanation here. This is a glue block I put on here that I can use as a tenon to turn the small piece. So I'm gonna quickly turn that off and I'll shape the top. And then this is a medallion that's from the Cadillac Ranch paint. And so I'm gonna use this as an inset. So I'll take this to the shape I want and then I'm gonna cut an inset for this and get this thing stained and ready to receive it. Right, the shape of this thing is pretty darn good and I've got my little medallion here. So I've measured it and I'll make a little inset here on the dome. So to do that, very carefully make a couple of marks here and I'll make my uh, marks small for the medallion and I'll work my way in slowly on it. Is, uh, I use this old skew here, start the inset, and I'll just kind of work the wood out of the center here. Make a nice flat surface. Stop the lathe. Bring up the medallion. And I'll go back and forth with this until it's a good fit. And that is probably the best fit I've ever had on one of these medallions. Usually I get them just a little bit sloppy, but that thing is in there nice and snug. So I want the top to have a real contrast to the bottom. So I've decided to uh, stain this with Jacobian, Minwax Jacobian. That is the darkest stain I know of. So I'll put a couple of coats on this. Let it dry. This stuff has to dry for a few hours here. So I'll let it set and get nice and dry and then I'll back sand it and put another coat on and try to retain this nice dark color here. So here's the best part of the whole job. Now before I flip this piece and take the tenon off, I thought I'd go ahead and, and finish the inside and do as much of the outside as I can. Go ahead and put a first coat in there. I've got this sanded down to 320 and it's looking pretty darn good here. So just apply some linseed and uh, 
hope it doesn't come out too dark. I don't think it will. I want it to contrast with that real dark uh, Jacobian stain that I put on the lid. But I think that's going to be beautiful. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take the tenon off of this. I think it's ready. And a trick I learned is to put a little bit of painter's tape on the jaws of your chalk, and that will kind of make a nice anti-slip surface so that you don't have to be super aggressive with these little pieces like this. I mean, this is kind of a frail piece in a way, and I don't want it to split uh, from the pressure of the chuck. I've learned that lesson the hard way too many, too many times. So I'm going to take it real easy on this thing, and I'm going to get it, uh, take this tenon off right now. Last step is to apply my brand. This one made for me by Gary Skurlock of Scully Wood and Metal. And uh, put it right there. I heat this thing with a propane torch for about 35 seconds or so. And that seems to give me the right heat for the brass. And just kind of roll it back and forth very carefully. Pick up all the details. And let's see how we did. Oh, that's a good one. Very happy. Well, I keep thinking of things. I've got a piece of formica here. I thought I would darken these uh, lines up here a little bit. Make them pop. Learned this from the Rebel Turner. Got a little piece of formica. It really works nice for burning these highlights into your wood. And it matches what I did up under the lid, too. That's really sweet, I like it. And we can apply some more linseed oil, finish the bottom. Oh, that's so nice. I'm extremely happy with this so far. So, really gonna soak it in good, uh, expose some new grain on the bottom when I finished it. And I had to do a little bit of CA stabilization, uh, fed some of the cracks. And so now this oil is just going to suck into that end grain. So I'll end up putting two or three coats of this on before I'm happy. And uh, just ready for some paste wax on the bottom here. A couple coatings of boiled linseed oil has really brought out the grain very nicely. And I think it's, it's a good finish for this wood. I thought about doing lacquer and whatnot, but I think the paste wax is is really just fine. So there we go, and uh, polish it up a little bit. We'll do a couple of coats of this. Boy, that is almost ready. Just going to put a little paste wax on the wood, and then I'm going to go ahead and glue that medallion in there. And it's coming together here. Last step here before I do my final wax is uh, to apply my little medallion. It fits in here just so. So a little bit of gel CA and a little bit of pressure. And we'll let that sit for a little while and put a final polish on it. Well, I have to say I'm pretty happy with this piece. I wish I'd been able to salvage the mesquite for the lid, but I think the sapelli or mahogany here that I used uh, is a good complement and works well uh, with the mesquite. Uh, still have to uh, go back on the lathe here and do some more polishing. I'll do a couple more coats of the paste wax here and give that a nice polish. But uh, I think this one's gonna find its way uh, to my favorite auntie who lives out in Tucson, Arizona, 
And thank you, Auntie, for letting me pillage your wood pile. If you'd like to know more about how I made the cabochon uh, for this piece, I have another video on working with the paint chips that I got at Cadillac Ranch in Amarillo. And I'll include a link to that video in the notes. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.